and good morning to those of you who are joining us on Facebook live stream. We're glad to have you with us today also. Uh, this is a better crowd today than I anticipated because of the time change, because it doesn't take a lot for a Baptist to have an excuse to stay home from church sometimes, amen? So we're glad to see each and every one of you here this morning, and we trust you've had a good week in the Lord, and are looking forward to worshiping the Lord today in spirit and truth. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and ask his blessings on the service. So John, would you please fill the grace? presentation on the 28th for the Gideons again this year. We're giving 10 minutes at the 11 o'clock hour. 
uh, to uh, make the Gideon's presentation. Of course, we like to take up an offering for the Gideon. That's the placing of Bibles in schools and, and uh, uh, you know, motel rooms and places like that. And uh, what we do, we, we'll do again just in a week. We'll take up an offering for them afterwards. Of course, we'll have a bucket back there. We're not packing the place right now. Uh, but there will be a bucket back there. If you make out a check for the Gideon's, you make out a Harvest Baptist Church. And anything up to $1,000, we, we'll match out of our general fund. So if we take in $1,000, we'll go to $2,000 going to the Gideon's, okay? Uh, we've been doing that for years, and we'll continue to do that. If we take in $5,000, we're still going to match it only $1,000, amen? <laughs> uh, so, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we do take in $5,000. I know they do also, but anyway, you come prepared to give that day, and I know it'll be a blessing, amen? Now, last Sunday morning, with, during the altar call, did y'all hear something snap? Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. The, the altar is broken. I didn't know that till this morning. The altar is broke on this end, okay? Uh, I heard a loud popping. I just thought the Lord was doing something out there. I didn't know. He was. Uh, he was, amen, he was, amen. And, uh, and uh, Tony came up this morning and told me about that. I said, man, you just, and I, I walked away to think much of it. I started thinking about it, you know. I, I, that's a wonderful idea for a message, broken altars. And then so so uh, I thought thank you for the for the idea. Yeah, I'll be bringing the message so for long on uh, broken altars. By the way, that's what's wrong with America today. Yeah. The church has broken altars, yeah. amen. And, uh, and, and you know what's wrong with the homes today? They have broken altars in home also. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, that, that's a message in itself. And so I appreciate that assist there from Tony. And uh, we're just looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us today. It's good to see Don here with us again this morning, amen. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Amen. amen. If you hadn't showed up, my wife would have absorbed all this message by herself. Amen. So we appreciate you being here and, uh, and all that you do for the Lord here at Harvest Baptist Church. Amen. Uh, like I said, this, this is a bigger crowd than I anticipated this morning. So I'm, I'm much pleased. Amen. Uh, listen, it's, it's time to get back, start getting back in the swing of things. You know, I, I know we're, we're still in the gym. We'll probably be in the gym a little bit longer. I don't like being in a gym when we have a beautiful sanctuary sitting across the parking lot, amen? And uh, so, uh, trust me, one day, Lord willing, we'll be back over there. And if he's not willing, we'll stay in the gym, amen? And so, uh, but we're, we're trusting that uh, uh, good things are going to continue to happen here at Harvest Baptist Church for 2021. And uh, we pray that you all are part of it also. And those of you who are at home, uh, Facebook, again, I... You know, I, I'm thankful for those who faithfully watch on Facebook. You know, we've got, we've got people that, that uh, just sit in their ties. We have, I think, five in the, uh, in the mail. Every week we go to the mailbox, you know. It, it's even motivating me to go to the mailbox nowadays because there's tithe checks in there all week long, amen? And, I, and it makes it so easy because I've never had to beg for money at this church. We never have. God has always been so good to always meet our need, and not just meet the need, but give it above and beyond. You know, when we, I want to bring on Jesus, through, not y'all, through Jesus in just a second, okay? It was about seven, eight years ago when we paid this property off. We paid it off probably about 10 years ahead of time. And not one, we didn't take up one special offering to pay off this property. It's just like we made in the building, in the general fund, and we were able to pay off this property. We're able to do a lot of things. If, if you missed church last Wednesday night, we just uh, voted to buy new pews. Amen. Somebody said we ought to sell the pews. I didn't know if they meant the new ones or the old ones. So, but it, it, anyway, uh, we, we just bought new pews. We didn't have to take an offering to buy new pews. You know, we, we put a roof on this thing. You know, we didn't have to uh, take up an offering to do the roof. Everything we do, uh, God has blessed us. We're buying, we're buying all that property out back. Hopefully, one day. Well, about 10 or 12 acres in it, you know, uh, of, of the trees out there. But we got the money set aside for it. We didn't have to take up one special offering. What am I saying? You don't need to stop giving my you are. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying to God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. And so I'm, I'm just thankful to you all that God has blessed this ministry. And I believe as long as we keep the, the number one thing, Number one around here, that Jesus will continue to bless this ministry. Not just financially, but more importantly than that, spiritually. Amen? Amen? And what is that number one thing that we need to be doing? When we leave this property, we need to be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and making sure a lost and dying world 
here's the message that this church has to spread. Not just through the pulpit, but through you who are sitting in the seats out front. God bless you, and thank you so very much. Well, Ray's going to come again. Page 43, if you use the handle, it'll be on the screen up here. We're marching to Zion. Oh, Miss Ray was that one. Well, who gave you permission? Amen. I was going to say thank you last Sunday because I didn't want to miss that when it's sold out. But I do want to say thank you to everybody in this church because I love every young person that I've been here a long, long time. Yeah. And this is where my heart is. And last Sunday was the first Sunday since August that I had been here. And I'm back home now. And the Lord has blessed me so and it's been nothing but prayers, cards, visits, and love from Okay, you, Amen. Amen. you know, she didn't want to mess up sold out, but she didn't mind messing up the preacher. Amen. <laughs> As everyone said, God bless you, Miss Rachel. We love you. Amen. We love you too. Started 
We canceled teen camp. We canceled vacation Bible school. We canceled the revival we had scheduled. We canceled choir. We thought we knew what we were doing. We had plans. But all of a sudden, those plans didn't mean anything. And so I, when I looked at that verse, I said, wait a second. That applies not only to us as individual believers, but that applies to us as a church. You know, I want to make plans. I, I love, I'm a person of plans, okay? I love to know what's going to happen when so we can have some milestones along the way, make sure we arrive when we're supposed to arrive, and all those good things. But you know what? I'm just thankful that we are out here today in this gymnasium, you know? And, and it's hard to make plans right now. There's a research and polling group. It's called Barna. Most of you have heard it. Uh, most of the research and, uh, they, they do has to do with faith and culture. And they came out with a recent, I say it's recent, I'm, I'm gonna give you the name of it, Barna 2020 Year in Review, top 10 releases. And that's December 28, 2020. I give you all the information so you can go back and look at all of it and read it. Uh, I, I got three or four things I've written down here from that research. And, and one of the things that they've noted about 2020 is that one in three practicing Christians has stopped attending church. That also includes those who are watching uh, online uh, uh, during COVID-19. 34% of that one in three, it, this is a new term for me, is now digitally church hopping. We know what a church hopper is, right? It's like popcorn. It pops up over here, they pop up over here, then they pop up over here, then they pop up over here, you know. They never stay in place long. But now they're digitally church hopping. Millennials are not watching the stream services. A millennial was anyone born between 1981 and I think 1996, somewhere around there, about 25, 39, 40 years of age. Churchgoers are now divided on the value of the church. Some churches have closed down completely. A, a large church over in the Atlanta area, with, it was at North Point, uh, Andy Stanley's the pastor, is one of the largest churches in America, got campuses all over the Atlanta area. They closed down completely for the whole year. And even now, they're, they're barely doing anything. You know, if, if we can, some of you need to hold your hand over here, right? If we can send our kids to school. Amen. You know, Amen. Wait, you're homeschooled. What you talking about over here? Amen. <laughs> If we, could, if we could go to Walmart, I, I guarantee you'll find more people at Walmart or Lowe's today than you'll yes. find here at Harvest Baptist Church. Preach it, preach it. Yeah, amen? Yes, amen. I'm trying. Amen. <laughs> amen? But when we start questioning the value of the church, we are questioning, what they don't understand is, we are questioning what Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Calvary. Amen. Because in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, the Bible says, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Right. How in the world can we question the value of that which Jesus Christ shed his blood upon the cross of Calvary for? Yes. Right. It also said in there, again, that's Barnabas 2020, you're in review, December 28, 1920. Half of the pastors feel limited to speak on moral issues because of the people. I guess it meant the people that's sitting in front of them. I'll go on record. Y'all don't scare me. <laughs> I'm going up the side door after the service. Y'all don't scare me at all, okay? What they were talking about is the, all the things that start, you know, we sometimes forget very quick, quickly, but start thinking about all the things that happened this past year, other than just, as I read through the China virus, all of the unrest in the streets and all of the, the burning, the looting, and everything else, and uh, everything goes along with it. And, you know, the pastors are scared to speak out. They're scared to, they're scared to speak out on critical race theory and, and things of that nature now. And, and let me tell you something. We're going to continue speaking out on whatever is addressing the culture that we live in today. Amen. And because we need to take a stand as a body of believers. Amen. Amen. Most, most churches won't. We need to. Amen. You know, if, 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 the, if, if the Bible Belt is not willing to stand and speak the truth and the word of God, then we might as well close the doors and go home. Right. You know, I, I've had a lot of people in the past say, why does this church today like the early church? And I always ask them, what part of the early church do you want the church today to be like? 
do, do you want the part where they had false teachers? Remember the Judaizers they crept in uh, to the early church? Do, do you want the sexual immorality that was involved in the early church? Do you want the idolatry? Do you, do you want the drunkenness at the Lord's table? Uh, the early church had factions and divisions. Uh, tell me what part of the early church you want the church to have today. Now, believe it or not, I know this is hard to believe, I am smart enough to understand what they're asking for. They knew that the early church, in spite of everything that was going against them, by the way, that was Satan. He is real, okay? He's not just a concept. He's not just a theory. He is real. And that's why the early church struggled with those issues. But what they're saying is, what we want is what the early church had. They had the presence and power of God. Amen. Amen? Churches today don't stand for anything because they don't stand for anything. They don't preach against anything because they're scared they're going to offend somebody out there and they'll quit coming. But we have to stop and ask ourselves this question. Most churches weren't making an impact before COVID-19. So what kind of an impact are we making during COVID-19? You know, before COVID-19 hit, most church members were nothing more than spectators. They're still spectators and not participators. And we need more participators and less spectators in the church today, man. Amen. Uh, it, it's a matter of, are we more interested in the methodology that we have, or are we more interested in the message that God has for us from his word? Amen? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm, here's the message I have today. We need more God and less of us. Amen. Isn't that what John the Baptist said? He must increase, but I must decrease, John 3, 30. That's what we need today. And, and, and the church today seems to have little concern for lost people. You know, I believe that, we, and this, this is one of the positives that's come out of COVID-19, it's allowed us to, believe it or not, even with the separation and the quarantines and everything else going on around us, we have been able to, in many ways, minister to people more this past year than we were doing in the past. More, I'm talking about more of our people here in the church. And that's a good thing. You know, if we can't meet the needs of our own folks here, then we're in trouble. But some people think that church is only designed to do that, to meet the needs of the members. God placed this church in Rudolph, South Carolina, that we might meet the needs of lost people out there also. Amen. And the only way we'll meet those needs is by getting off our blessed assurance, going out those doors, and telling people that Jesus loves them, that he died for them, and he wants to save them. Amen? Amen. Uh, so what is it we look for when we come to church? Are we looking for a perfect pastor? You, you, you shouldn't have pulled in this the parking lot this morning. <laughs> Amen? Are you looking for a perfect preacher? You sure shouldn't have pulled in this parking lot this morning. Are you looking for a perfect people? Close. <laughs> Bring it on y'all. Okay? But I didn't come to church looking for perfection. I didn't come to church looking for perfection in the music. I didn't come to church looking for perfection in you all. I came to church to have an encounter with the living God. Hey, hey. And, and if we fail to do that, then we have failed to do what God wants us to do. Now turn your Bible over to Acts chapter 14. The words will be on the screen, but I do want to encourage you, if you did bring your Bible, to use your Bible this morning. Acts chapter 14. I'm going to begin reading here in just a minute. Just a minute. But in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, I, I love the book of Acts for a lot of reasons. But in Acts 1 and 2, the main character is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Then when you come to Acts 4 through chapter 6, the main character seems to be Satan. And after Acts 6, although we still see the Holy Spirit throughout the remainder of the book of Acts, we see Jesus, but we also see Satan at work doing that which he can only do. And so as you look at the book of Acts, you'll see the, where the disciples are being arrested and jailed. We see where two church members were killed by God himself for lying. We see where James, the apostle, is killed. We see where Stephen is martyred. And we see where Paul is stoned and left on the road for dead. And that's what we're going to pick up reading here in verse number 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people in a bad way. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. 
how be it, the disciples stood around about him. He rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue the faith and that we must go through much tribulation into, into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with uh, fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. The early church faces, faces, that's good air. If you're looking for perfection in the past, right? the early church faced the virus of persecution. But in spite of that virus of persecution, they stood. Amen. They, they didn't compromise. They didn't back down. They didn't quit. It, it, in fact, it was an exciting time to be a part of the church in spite of all the persecution they were experiencing. They loved one another. That helps, amen. And I believe, I believe Harvest Baptist Church is a loving church. I really do. Amen. Amen. Nine people believe that, amen. Praise God can do nine, amen. Uh, by the way, in spite of all the persecution, it wasn't all bad back then. They experienced the blessings of God. In, in spite of the China virus, it's not been all bad. We've seen God move in people's lives, and we're thankful for that, amen? The early church was planted in an area where there were many lost people around them. We have been planted in an area, believe it or not, where many lost people are all around us, okay? This is a church. The first thing they did was they looked up, and when they looked up, they were encouraged. By the way, the Bible tells us where to look up. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And after they looked up and were encouraged, they started looking around. And as they looked around, they had a renewed hope. They had a renewed zeal of what it was that God had called them to do. In Matthew 16, 18, we used that verse a couple of times recently. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. To God be the glory. Jesus builds the church, but he builds it through us. Nobody believes that. Amen. Jesus builds the church, but he builds the church through us. Amen? So the million dollar question is, how do we build the church? From our text today, we're going to look at three different things. Number one, we're going to build the church of the Lord Jesus Christ with the gospel. Look at verse 21. And when they preach the gospel to that city, preaching should affect a person's thinking by appealing to their heart. Amen. The problem today is we have too many lecturers, too many people who want to stand behind the pulpit and simply teach a Bible story, a Bible lesson to the children. And send everybody home with Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And they don't lift up their voice like a trumpet like the scripture tells us to. Amen. You know, you know what the problem is? There's no passion in most presentations of the gospel. Amen. Where's the passion at? I mean, if, if you go to a Gamecock football game, and if you can be passionate about watching them get drunk every week on this, <laughs> I mean, you're excited to go down there and watch the Gamecocks get beat again. And you're, and you're still pulling for them. Well, everybody loves an underdog. If you love an underdog, you've got the right team, amen? <laughs> and then, if you want to go up to Death Valley, there's a little bit of passion going on up there also. People are passionate about it. But when we come to church, It's like we're scared to breathe. Amen. 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 Listen to me. The gospel. What is the gospel? That, you know the reason why most people aren't passionate about the gospel? They don't know what the gospel is. That's right. We know that gospel translates good news. We do know that. 
But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what saves us. Amen. His death upon the cross, his burial, and the fact that he rose again the third day. Now, we read here in verse number 19 where they stoned Paul and they drug him out of the city. Now, based on 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, I believe the apostle Paul actually died. If you go over there, read that later. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 5. Read that. Paul died, I believe, right here with this stoning that took place right here. Then in verse 20, we read where the disciples all gathered around him. Could you imagine that? They're mourning the death of the beloved apostle Paul. And all of a sudden, he moved. <laughs> and he gets up, shakes himself off. He said, guys, I'm glad that's over with. Well, that's my translation. And he gets up and he moves and he goes and he does what God's called him to do. He goes to Derby. Why is he going to Derby? He's going to Derby to preach the gospel. What, what, what do you mean? He's going soul winning. Amen. He's going to go tell some people that need to hear about Jesus how to be saved. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, the Apostle Paul said, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. You, know, you know, the gospel is what made Paul, Paul. The gospel is what makes the church, the church today. And if we're not proclaiming the gospel, not only in here, but out there, then we really aren't the church that Christ died for. Yes, I understand that the China virus has impacted us. Yes, I understand that we can't do exactly everything that we did before. But I also know this here. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, we're not promised tomorrow. And so if we don't do today what Christ has called us to do. Amen. I've heard the gospel explained this way. The gospel is simply this. It's simply one beggar telling another beggar. Where to find bread? Amen. Well, that's a truth right there. Amen. 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 And, and, but that is our responsibility as a body of believers. Evangelism is absolutely necessary for our survival as a church. Amen. You know, last week when Sold Out was here, uh, they came in. And uh, one of the things that I believe it was Dusty said to me, he says, the one thing I like about your church is that you have young people in your church. Well, we used to have a whole lot more than we do now, but you, you, you see, you got young people in your church. It's not just, you said, a lot of churches we go into, they've all got hair that look like yours, Pastor. <laughs> That's why I kept 10% of that love offering, amen? <laughs> my life out for amen? He said, but for the majority of church, it, it, it's all old people. You got young people in your church, amen? Well, you know, most of our young people that are here say, well, like, they got a drug problem. But their dad and mom drugs them, drugs them to church every Sunday. No, that's, no, that's okay. That's, that's a good thing. Amen. But, but, you know, but we've got to be inviting people to come here and hear the gospel. But I'm going to be honest with you. That's not the primary way that we want to get the gospel out inside this building. Amen. Uh, what we have to do is we have to do what Paul did. He got up after he fell and shook himself off and went to Derby. He went somewhere to present the gospel. And that's what we have to do every time, every time we leave out this building. We're going somewhere. Are we gospel conscious? Are we willing to tell others about Jesus Christ? Well, yeah, I just believe religion is a personal thing. Well, you better be glad Jesus didn't feel that way about it. Amen? You better be glad somebody didn't feel that way about it. Because if you're saved, somebody told you how to be saved. I don't care if it's a Sunday school teacher, a preacher, your dad, your mom, your grandma, whoever it may have been. Somebody told you how to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And because we have that personal relationship, we have a responsibility to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. Uh, the Great Commission is given in several, in five different books of the Bible that I know of. But in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, I love it. It says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Last year, during the China virus, we had over 70 people trust Jesus Christ before we saved it. Amen. But you know what? This is not 2020. 
This is 2021, and we can't keep looking back to what God did last year. We've got to look forward to what God can do in us and through us this year to build his church. Amen? And if we're going to build this church, we will have to build it with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of churches are known for different things. You know, uh, you go into communities, some churches are known for the, the great Christmas pageant they put on every year. The Christmas tree, amen, or whoever it is. And that's what they're known for. I remember there was a church down in Lexington for years. It, 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 it was known for its live drama, you know. And, and you know, and that's a wonderful thing. But I also heard someone from that church say, that's the only thing we do all year long. He said, our only goal is to, our only focus is that. Well, you got it. Oh, some are known for their great Easter thing bottles and different things. You know, they're known for something. There's something special about them. There's nothing special about us. Let me go on record. The only thing special here is Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. Amen. He's our sovereign God. Amen. But also, look at verse 21 and 22. This is something that, we, that we're going to have to do. If we're going to build this church, we've got to build through this thing called encouragement. It says in verse 21, And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must have, must uh, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, that word exhorting there in verse 22, it means... To encourage. In fact, God first put you up there again, can't. And we're going to substitute one word there, okay? Confirming the souls of the disciples and encouraging them to continue in the faith. That and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Paul was simply saying, he was there, he preached to them, he left, he went to Derby. But he was concerned about the ones he preached to, the ones who had made a profession of faith. He said, hey, i got to go back to Lystra. i got to go back to Iconium. i got to go back to all those places and, 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 and give further instruction on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to teach them some more things. I want to be an encouragement to them. He wanted them to be able to stand strong in the faith. He wanted to be able to increase their faith. The people they were preaching to, we're not having an easy time. That's why that word tribulation is used there in that verse. They were experiencing tribulation. We know that Jesus said, in this world, you shall have tribulation, but they could cheer, for I've overcome the world. We know that. And we all know what tribulation means. You know, I've never, I've never looked up the word tribulation in the Greek before, and I did this yesterday in my Strong's Concordance, and, 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 and here, here's what it means. Affliction, trouble, anguish, persecution, suffering, a pressing pressure. Anything that burdens the spirit. If you haven't experienced some of that this past year, make sure you touch me on the way out the door this morning. Amen? Because I need some of what you've got right now, okay? If, if we're coming to church and meeting in a gym... And because we are meeting in a gym, that discourages you because we have a beautiful sanctuary that we'd rather be in over there. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Ima if we're discouraged meeting in the gym, imagine what those are at our home right now who are shut-ins must be experiencing. Right. Because they can't come because of health issues or because of their age, and they choose to stay home so they won't get the virus. Think what they must be experiencing, how discouraged they must be today. Listen, we have a responsibility as a church to encourage one another. Amen? Uh, you know, every time I get a text, you know, I get texts during the week, preacher, I'm praying for you. That encourages me every time. Every time. That always encourages me. You know, when, when, when I find out how many people are watching online, that encourages me to know that people are watching the service, or at least they got it turned on. <laughs> they're making us think they're watching the service. Hey, Amen. No, they're watching the service. Maybe some of you are right now, too. And then a couple of you are sleeping right now, too. That's okay, I guess, you know. Listen, we 
have a responsibility to encourage everyone who's part of the family of God. And listen, you are to be encouraged to give so that you can go out and be an encourager to others. Amen? You know, I'm, I'm encouraged to give. I, is, this, is this where I want to be at this week? Absolutely not. But I'm encouraged by the fact that we can be here. Yes, amen. I'm encouraged amen. by the fact that it's dry in here. Amen. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have heat. Yes. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have air. Yes. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have restrooms right back there. Amen. amen. I'm encouraged by the fact that we have a water fountain. And I'm encouraged by the fact that you all are here. Amen. Praise God for that. Listen. I was told a long time ago that encouragement is kind of like peanut butter. If you spread it spread it around enough, it helps hold things together better. Amen. And, and, and so I'm, I'm, at, I'm asking you all to be peanut butter Christians this morning. Amen. Amen. Spread it around. Amen. And let's keep it together. Let's, let's do something for the glory of God. Amen. And, uh, listen. There's, there's another thing I read here. Look at verse number 23. Verse 23, and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, ooh, everybody about fasting there? Amen. That's that lost art. Amen. 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 We miss a meal, spend time with Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for that, okay? They did that. They commended them to the church, to the Lord, on whom they believed. So they prayed, verse 23, they fasted for him, verse 23, and they commended them to the Lord. Amen? That means they mention you like being worthy. You know? You know, churches are known for, a lot of people talk about churches. They talk about a particular church. Particularly if that church happens to make the newspaper. Or TV. Or if the pastor in that church went off with the piano player. <laughs> if the pastor in this church went off with the piano player, don't worry about it. It's his life. Amen. Amen. But they start talking. Did you hear about Harvest Baptist Church? I remember. There was a pastor, and this has probably been 25 years ago. I should have known he was telling me a story he loved. He told me he and his associate, and there was a pastor and associate over friendship at the time, and I had a good relationship, and he could cross way out over here. So we all know who I'm talking about. But I'm talking about Pastor Bruce Foster, okay? So let's get out of the way. He said, we were out knocking doors every day, and we came across a bunch of members we heard the Lord and drink and put him out back and out back. He said, man, the preacher, they were having a big old party. They had two cups full of beer. <laughs> and there's nothing more the Lord. So I don't even know. And I'm thinking, I, I'm, 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 I'm so embarrassed, you know. I, I said, well, Bruce, I don't understand it. I said, because I preach against it. I said, if it moves in the service, you know, if somebody looks like they're like a beer, I, I preach out right now, okay? <laughs> I said, but so if they're good, you know, they're going to get involved. I believe in it. I'm going crazy practice. And they let me on for a while, and they might have been with a kidney. You call it kidney, I call it wine. You know, it was giving me a hard time, and I'm glad they felt like they could do that. Amen. But you know what? We ought to be building people up. Amen. Encouraging people. There are too many churches that have a committee, and that committee is called the Wrecking Crew. It's not a formal committee. It's not one you'll find in their constitution or in their bylaws, but it's there. And I praise God that we do not have a wrecking crew here at this church. And I give God all the glory for that. Amen? Listen, the, 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 the problem, the problem with churches today, and, and I kind of start off saying this, is that the, the pulpit is silent on sin. We don't expect the church members to live any differently than the people who've never trusted Jesus Christ to live. And there's something wrong with that perception. You know why? Because it's diametrically opposed to what the Word of God teaches us. 
but we're, but we're, but we're scared to preach on sin because we're going to offend somebody. And if we preach too often on sin, they may not come back. And if they come back, they may not do what you talked about earlier, Pastor. They may not mail their tithe in. Mm -hmm. and, and so we remain silent. You know, not every, not every church is looking for today. They're looking for a Joel Osteen. All right. <laughs> You're okay. I'm okay. We're all okay. Amen. Just pass the plate and go home. And we pass the plate and we go home. I don't want to be a Joel Osteen. If you think that the Bible is silent on sin, after the service, no, just open. If you think Paul was silent on sin, just open up the First Corinthians chapter six and read verse nine and ten. And then ask yourself, when was the last time that you heard your pastor preach against sin and call sin sin Amen. and call it for what it is? When I got when I got saved, God saved me out of a mess. Yeah. Amen. I was I was an expert on sin. I speak that to my shame today. But when Jesus saved me, yes. He set me free. Praise God. And that and you know I. I, I don't want to go back to what I had before because it wasn't worth having in the first place. And, and so Paul, he went back to these Christians who had just been saved. And he, he goes back, man, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you in how you are to live your life as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that involved pointing out sin. He's great. He's given us a great example. So the only question is, are we going to follow the example of Scripture? Or are we going to live our lives by what we feel is right or wrong? You know, a lot of, a lot of people who go to church, they think, they think, well, my conscience will be my God. Well, what if you have a defiled conscience? Then that's, right. that's a poor God. Yeah. I, want, I want two things to be my God. I want the Word of God and the Spirit of God Amen. to be my God. And, and, and if I follow the leadership of the, of the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God, I can't go wrong. And if you do the same thing, you will not go wrong. And so, it doesn't bother me to preach on sin. Sin is what Jesus died for. But I'm saying, if, if we're going to be a church that's going to impact the community that Christ has placed us in. We've got to preach the gospel. We've got to tell them the truth and the word of God. How, how do you tell them that Jesus died for them without mentioning the reason he died for them? Sin. Yes, amen. But sin is Sin is not in vogue. Amen. It's out of style. That's old fashioned. In fact, that, that, that's kind of the message I was working on this morning, much as I preached before, you know. Uh, old time religion. So that's, that's what I want to preach. I want, I want to preach an old time religion. Amen. And I've been reworking that thing. I said, they didn't like it the first time. I think they'll like it the second time. If I preach it the second time, you don't like it, I'm not going back to those. <laughs> What we're going to do for Jesus, we better be doing now. Amen. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. So let me ask you Are you sharing Jesus with anyone at all? If not, why not? Why not start? Are, 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 you, trying, are you trying to encourage other believers? Are you trying to build other people up in the faith? That's what we need to be doing according to these verses here that the Apostle Paul, or not Paul, but 
But Dr. Luke actually penned it in verses 4 for, for Paul when he was speaking. He's talking about Or are we going to be satisfied to simply come back in here at 6 o'clock tonight? Then Wednesday night, praise the Lord. We get to do a lot of time because there's only about 25 or 30 of us. And we go over there on Wednesday night. The next Sunday morning, we'll be right back in here again. And we go through this routine. And that's the problem. Church is simply become a duty. Something that we do is, is part of our routine. Listen to me. It's got to be more than a duty. Duty's important. Don't, don't misunderstand it. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, let us hear the whole conclusion. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Duty is important. But I don't want to serve Jesus out of duty. I don't want, I don't want to come to church out, simply out of a sense of duty. I want to come to church and I want to serve Jesus because I love him. Amen. And I want other people to know I love him. And I want other people to know I love you. I know it doesn't sound like it sometimes when I'm preaching. But that's why I preach the way I do. Because I do love you. And I do care for you. And I want your home to be the best home that it can possibly be for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want, I want our children to be raised in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. I want our children to be safe in the streets. I want our children to be safe in their homes. I want them to be pure and chaste. Amen. That's all I got. That's enough. Amen. Every head bowed or right there. If you're here and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you were to die today, I don't want any of you to die today, but if you were to die today and you were to stand before Jesus and Jesus were to ask you this question, why? Why shall I my heaven? What would your answer be? There's only one correct answer. There's only one answer you'll accept. And if you don't have that answer, during this invitation, we're going to be singing a song. We'll be standing. I'll be standing out front. All you have to do is make your way out front, and we'll take the Bible and show you how you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, those of you who are listening at home, if you're not for sure, please text me. You have my cell phone number. Let me know. If you don't have a cell phone number, 803-424-3166. Call or text. I'd love to talk with you about establishing a relationship with Jesus. Don't trust religion to get you to heaven. Don't trust Baptist religion to get you to heaven. Only Jesus can do that. The altar is open. If you need to come, you say, God, make me a better soul winner or make me a soul winner. Period. Or God, help me to be an encourager. Help me to be someone who builds other people's faith up. Maybe you should come and pray for somebody. Whatever the case, you come as the Lord directs you to come. Father, bless this invitation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ray, let's all stand together. Page 261, sing the invitation. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
play some worship this morning. Lord, I'm praying that you are honored, that you're glorified. I'm praying that the songs that were sung, uh, Lord, I pray that as they ascended from your gospels in heaven, Lord, they were, they, they were a sweet morning sacrifice. We pray for the offering that was given. Lord, we just give you thanks for all that you do for us here at Harvest Baptist Church. But Lord, let us live our lives like we belong to a living Lord. And Father, we're so thankful that we can come before you. We can bow our heads and confess that you're God and that we're not. And that we can confess our need for you. And Lord, as we leave this place this day, Lord, watch over, protect, and bless. See us back here safely. And God, we'll be so careful to give you glory for that. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.